Hey everyone, and welcome to my video about video game development in 2019 using a video game engine. So, today I'm going to be talking about the different video game engines and which one you should be using as a beginner or intermediate making video games. So, as you can see, there's a lot of different video game engines to choose from, from the logos in that picture. But, really, we're only going to be talking about a few of them because there really are only a few video game engines that are actually practical. So let's get into it. First off, I'm going to be talking about Lumberyard by Amazon. So really, this is a brand new video game engine and it's used by Star Citizen, which is a very big and serious sort of game. But the problem is this engine is still pretty new and it's fairly complicated as well. So. There's just not enough tutorials, I would say, and I'd say it's worth it to just wait a little while before using this specific engine. Next up, we have CryEngine. This is another really big and powerful engine, just like Amazon Lumberyard, but this one has a different problem. The problem with this is this has been used by some really big games as well, and this is an older engine but it still does not have tutorials that are good for beginners or anything like that. It is definitely not worthwhile to pick this up as your first video game engine. So let's move on to the next one. Now we have Construct 2. This is a primarily 2D based uh, video game engine and this one also has a problem as well. The problem with this video game engine is that it's not really coding it's more of drag and drop which is kind of a problem because as a video game developer I truly believe you should just start learning how to program right away it might be a little bit more difficult with a steeper learning curve but you'll learn a lot quickly and you'll be up to speed with everything you should know for getting possibly even your first job in the industry and next we have Game Maker Studio 2 there's actually many different versions of this engine, such as the free version, the $40 version, and the $100 version. What I really like about this is it's not really like a monthly fee or anything like that, like some other engines are using. It's actually just a one-time payment, and then you're set, well, for most of the versions. But <clears throat> it's really important that you're able to start with a free version for this, and you're able to make your first game but you're not actually able to release it. But for $40, you can go ahead and release it on desktop. So this engine is really easy to get started with. It uses GML programming language, which you can see right there. And you can actually see that it's an incredibly simple programming language, and it makes it super easy to get started. It, in fact, it's the programming language I started using originally back when I first learned how to program, and I'm really thankful that Game Maker exists for that. So what can you actually make with Game Maker Studio 2 though? Well, you can see in the video I'm showing Hyper Light Drifter, and this is one of the most popular games made with Game Maker Studio. If it was made with Game Maker Studio 1 or 2, I don't know, but the two of them are basically the same, it's just the second one has way more features. But other games that were made with Game Maker Studio includes Spelunky and Hotline Miami. So some pretty big and popular titles over the years have been made with Game Maker Studio. So I say you're definitely not limited when it comes to a single player 2D video game. And that's really where Game Maker Studio stands out. If you just want to get started and get started as quick as you can, you don't care about uh, multiplayer, you don't care about making a 3D game, you don't want some huge project, which you shouldn't on your first video game, but Game Maker Studio is therefore a great option for your first sort of simple 2D game that you want to create. And yeah, it has everything you could want for 2D. So now let's take a look at Godot. This is actually an open source video game engine, meaning that anyone can just download it and actually make edits to the engine itself. It's not necessarily run by, say, a standard company. Like, for example, Game Maker Studio is run by Yo-Yo Games. So they actually own the engine. With this, anyone can just download the engine and make actual changes to the engine itself. And that also 
comes with the fact that it's completely free. You can use Godot and make any game you want with it. But there's also a few problems with Godot. First of all, the documentation is not the best. So if you were to use GameMaker Studio and you didn't understand how to do something, chances are it's pretty easy to figure out how to fix your issue or how to find out how to do exactly what you want to do because it's run by a standard company that has good documentation for everything in the engine. And also there's plenty of YouTube videos available. Now I'm also pretty sure there's quite a few videos out there for Godot, but the documentation just really isn't there yet. But they are a newer video game engine, so given some time, they probably will fix this. And also, Godot is a little bit more complex than Game Maker Studio, meaning that you're probably going to struggle a little bit more understanding the programming language and there's a little bit more to it than there is in Game Maker. So that also comes with the fact then that this programming language is a little bit more powerful. So you can do quite a bit more with Godot than you really could with Game Maker Studio. And this can be useful, but only really useful if you're actually more of an intermediate programmer than a beginner. Because as a beginner, of course, you start out with knowing nothing. So, I have a few example game projects that were made using Godot here in the video, and I wasn't able to find any video games that I've actually heard of before, but I just found some showcase footage of different game projects that they have. So, yeah, we'll watch a few more of these and then move on to the next engine. And next up we have Unreal Engine 4. So this com video game engine is completely free to use starting I think a year or two ago. And actually the only cost associated with it is if your game makes more than $3,000 then you need to pay a 5% royalty. Not too bad I think. But this engine is not going to be easy to use, especially as your first video game engine. Now if you're intermediate or advanced, you can handle it, but this uh, engine uses C++ for its programming, which is a very old language that's very difficult to use, but also very, very powerful. So yeah, it's got so many tools at its disposal, this engine in general, I mean, and there's so many features. It's been built for, I believe, around 20 years, and some really big games have been made in it, which we're going to take a look at real quick. So one of my favorite video game series of all time, the Borderlands series, was actually made using Unreal Engine. And it is being made using Unreal Engine because they have Borderlands 3 coming out eventually. So I really love this game and it's a very popular game that was made with Unreal Engine, including some other games too. So we're gonna take a quick look at that. And also Fortnite was created in Unreal Engine. And now we are going to look at Unity, the final game engine that we're going to look at. So this is my personal favorite game engine, and it's actually free for almost anything. There's a few features that you're going to need to pay for, and that'll be $25 a month or $125 a month, I believe, which is quite pricey. And these features that I'm talking about are not essential at all. They're very minor uh, add-ons that you don't really need. So chances are you'll just be able to stick with the free version and unless your game is making more than I believe a hundred thousand you don't need to worry so it uses C sharp as its programming language which is similar to C++ but it's actually somewhat similar to Java as well so or it's as difficult as Java I would say so C sharp is not the hardest programming language to learn unlike C++ and C sharp is a little bit less efficient than C++ is, but it's still an incredibly good language. So there's also a little bit of scripting language in Unity. There's a lot more in Unreal Engine, but that's slowly changing because both Unreal Engine and Unity are right now basically fighting to become the number one game engine for beginners and intermediates and 
people who want to develop their own video games and it's a very big battle. They're both introducing tons of new features all the time to try to have the best engine that you can possibly have, which is good for us developers, of course. So yeah, this engine is pretty powerful. And as a beginner, I'd say there's no difference between choosing Unreal Engine and Unity, except the fact that Unity is going to be easier for you. So I'd really say go with Unity. But I mean, part of this is my bias. I've learned both Unity and Unreal Engine to an extent. I do truly believe that Unity is easier to learn and it can do just about everything that Unreal Engine can do. And if it can't do something that Unreal Engine can do, I bet you that'll change within a few months because they're always announcing new features. And yeah, that might not necessarily be true. I'm sure there are plenty of things that Unreal Engine is able to do. When it comes to graphics and shaders in Unity, that's really where it loses compared to Unreal Engine. But when it comes to mobile gaming, such as putting your game on iOS or Android, that is really where Unity shines. So let's take a look at some games that are made with Unity. So first off, we have Kerbal Space Program. I'm sure many of you play this game. I never played it, but it, it looks like a fun game. I'll say that. And lastly, we have a new game announced by the Call of Duty team. So they're actually going to be making a Call of Duty mobile version. So this is really big news because Call of Duty is, of course, a massive franchise, one of the biggest video game franchises. And that's being made in Unity for mobile devices. So thank you for watching and please comment if you have any questions.